This guy is a new creature. It's something completely different, completely new. And if his performance is anything like his build quality and how and what they put into the software, I think they're going to have another hit on their hands. I got something to say, something to say. Hey everybody, how's it going? Our house 21 here, and welcome to another episode of RC Physics. For those of you who are new to the channel, RC Physics is a channel dedicated to the science and technology behind our favorite RC hobbies. And today we have something really cool. So for those who don't know, I've had a long time relationship with Castle Creations and they are about to debut one of their most significant products in a long time. Now, I know I've been saying recently a lot about most significant this and that, but this really is a big deal coming from the guys at Castle. So what's inside the box and you see I am opening this up brand new. So this is a true unboxing, but Castle is about to debut a brand new product and they sent me a sample. So just to give you a little bit of background. So part of my relationship with Castle has been giving them honest feedback about what I found about their products and how I would think that they could be improved over the years and new features that would just be really cool to have because you can't be a technology company without pushing the edge. So inside this box is the latest greatest that they are about to drop. So again, I've never seen this before. So this is gonna be interesting. So what do we have? All right, so inside of the box right here, we have a prototype Ooh, this is nice. This is the new Castle Cobra 8 ESC. So very cool. So let's just go ahead and just soak this in. So this is a new replacement for the venerable Mamba Monster X 6S ESC. So big features of this guy, we have an aluminum case going all around. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Big barcode on there so you can link the information. So this, oh, this is CNC aluminum. This is pretty sweet. So the aluminum case actually acts as a heat sink and we've got three, um, six and a half millimeter bullets that are on here. So this will work with your standard a scale motors. It's got the castle sensor wire and it's a nice branded sensor wire that goes through here. And, um, solid gauge wire. This is 10 gauge wire here. And you've got the power switch. And oh, and also down here, they included a USB, a Castle Link programmer. So this is actually a new one. So I'll talk about all this in a second, but let's see what else is in the box down here. Oh, so I also included just so I had a good motor to pair with it. This is one of the new 1515 uh, lower cogging uh, 2200 kV motors. See, version two. So, what's new and what's special about this? Is there anything else in here? Nope. All right. So, what is new and what's special about these guys? Okay, so let me go ahead and open this up, pull off the motor so you can see what this is. So, this is an existing product, this has been around for a while. But as you can see, you've got the 1515 that's down in here. I'll leave that in the box for now because I, you guys have seen the Castle sensor motors. I did a lot of, I did some deep dives about that before. So this product is very interesting because this is actually a replacement for the Mamba Monster X 6S ESCs. Now, for those of you who've been around the block a little while, you guys know that the Mamba Monster X 6S is it's a very solid product, but it's honestly getting a little long in the tooth. Um, because one of the things, one of the issues with these ESCs is that they are essentially built around an 8 bit computing architecture. Now, not to geek out too much for you guys, but there have been several generations of electronics, like the original. PCs were 8-bit, then 16-bit, and basically that just determines how many bits of data that the computer can operate on at any given time. 
So in a world of computers, you have microprocessors and microcontrollers. A microprocessor is a type of a computer chip that you might find in your PC. You know, those are um, general purpose processors. For things that have to do a very specific set of functions, you oftentimes go with what they call a microcontroller. These are very limited processors that are just made to do a very specific thing. The current line of Castle Creations ESCs all use an older 8-bit microprocessor architecture, which is fine, which is great, which gives you all of the cool functionality that you have come to expect in the Castle Creations products. But we're getting to a point where a lot of those processors are getting end of life. That's forced things to change. And that's where this guy comes in. This guy is basically the same functionality that you have in the old Castle ESCs, but with a brain upgrade. I mean, it was supercharged. So this is running a new modern 32-bit processor, which has the ability to have a lot more processing on board, which gives you a lot more functionality, but it also lets you have all sorts of new features, like this has a built-in accelerometer. So when I connect this to my computer and I check my data logs, in addition to seeing all the things I'm used to seeing, like voltage, current, and uh, ripple voltage um, and things along that nature, I can also see an acceleration plot. So if I'm a drag racer or if I'm a speed runner or if I'm, a, if I'm a spec racer, I can see where I'm accelerating, where I'm decelerating. I can see that if I, if I pull the throttle and I get a big boost in acceleration, I'm connecting. And uh, so I've got good traction, I've got a good launch. If I pull the throttle, throttle goes high, current goes up, the car stays still. That means that I'm not connecting, I'm just dumping all the power in the spin. So there's all sorts of cool information that you can glean with the extra information from that accelerometer. And they also have the ability to use that data to enable other features in the future. So if you got ideas about what they could do with that, let them know. But this guy, should be a drop-in replacement for this guy. So let me go ahead and just pull this guy out. I have my ESCs secured in Velcro because I often swap things around. The problem with using industrial strength Velcro is that it's industrial strength. This does not want to come out. There we go. All right, that was more difficult than it should have been. Okay, so see right here, size difference. So it looks like the Cobra is slightly longer and slightly wider. So, but that should not affect too much how it fits. So features with it, I mentioned before, it's got the sensor wire here. We also have the standard Throttle linkage right here with the BC connection. And here is also the Castle aux channel. That's very cool. So you can actually enable additional programming features from your radio. So that's gonna be pretty cool to check out. One thing to note though, apparently this new interface has a USB-C right here. This is not backwards compatible with the older Castle products. So that's something that you're gonna to have to keep in mind. You're gonna now have to have a couple of different programmers if you have older Castle products. So just keep that in mind. So let me just go ahead and drop this in for fit check. And this will fit just fine. All right, so that's not a big deal. So the motor that's inside here right now is a 15, 12, 1800 kV which is a great motor for this platform, but I'm gonna be swapping in at uh, 2200 kV just to see the difference between the two. So what is this thing made for? Who is the person who is the intended market here? So this is not the all out brawler ESC. So this is not the one that is supposed to be taking cars to 120 miles an hour. This is for the guy who has a good eighth scale, like the Arma platforms, like the Traxxas platforms. So if I want to be running a, an Arma Typhon, like this right here, or Creighton, if I want to run any of the big Arma trucks that only take a 6S battery, this will run it just fine. If I want to run the castles that, uh, like all the castles 6S up to 6S, that's fine. So if I want to put this in a slash 4x4, I actually can do that. 
Uh, they have other ESCs that are probably a better fit for that, but if I want to do a complete all out build, this is the type of thing that you can put in that, but uh, the larger ones, um, this is a perfect drop-in replacement for that with a big a scale power system. This is not a replacement for the Mamba Monster X8S. This is not a replacement for the XLS2. Those are different categories of vehicles. This is for the guys who have a good ready to run racer or basher that you used to have something like this in, but you need something a little bit more. So some of the features that are included in this that were not in this, uh, this right here has a plastic case expression. So some people have problems with these guys overheating. This has some new cryo drive technology that they have had out for a while in the uh, first premiere in the Sidewinder 4 and um, Copperhead has it, um, XLX2 and uh, the Mama Monster X8S. So this runs cooler. So you can see already that it doesn't have quite as much of a fan on it. And that's because it doesn't need it. This is better at putting power to the road without having a lot of inefficiencies. So it wastes less power, so it generates less waste heat. It also has its advanced programming that helps to reduce ripple voltage and basically helps everything run a lot more stable. So this has had all the advantages of every ESC that's come before and taking it to the next level. Okay guys, to give you the full experience about setting this guy up from scratch, you can see I have this ESC with no connectors or anything. This is right from the box. This will get right down to my computer. So Castle included an updated version of their Castle Link USB device here. This is your lifeline. This is what you use to program your device. So Castle used to include a coupon for a Castle Link USB device uh, free. Uh, it was a little card that came in your ESC box. You go to the Castle website, you would uh, put in a code and they just send it to you for free. I'm going to assume that they're going to be doing the same thing, although it would be really nice if Castle just included one free in the box. Now, again, I understand why they did not do that because people like me who have a lot of ESCs, you end up with a stack of these things. And if you don't need them, you don't need them. But it is kind of a nice feature to have, especially if you're new and you don't know that you need this. So I will state this definitively. If you are new and you don't have any Castle ESCs, you are going to need at least one. And if you don't have a new next generation ESC, you're gonna need one anyway. So I would just take that little coupon, assuming that's how Castle is still gonna do it, and just put in the order right away, you're gonna need it. So, but you generally don't need to uh, do a lot of programming with these out of the box, but if you're a person like me, yeah, you need to do a lot of programming out of the box. So let me go ahead and just show you the whole process. So this is a USB-C device, so all you have to do is take it and plug it into a USB cable, like so. And you hear the beeps, and the system will automatically recognize that a USB device is connected, as you can see right here. And now, as soon as I plug it up, to the connector now double check the diagram you've got on the back here it's got negative plus and that little square that means signal so negative is the dark brown wire and the signal is the orange wire with the positive being right there in the middle so you can see so i'll plug this in and you see it immediately recognizes that you have an esc connected right here it automatically identifies it all right, so when you bring up the menu from scratch, you'll see that you've got, you know, a line of menus that comes through here. So this is, so Castle has updated the software significantly. This is a much cleaner user interface, a little bit more modern uh, than the old Castle Link. The old Castle Link, honestly, was something out of the 90s, early 2000s. Uh, this is more of a, uh, it's a more modern take on software. So you go down the line here, you've got, your basic configuration, power, brake, advance, motor, logging, throttle curves, brake curves, reverse curves, and then you look at the software versions. Um, and this is cool because you can see that there are newer versions of the firmware. So actually the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and tell it to uh, update the firmware. It looks like my device still has the 1.0, so that's the beta firmware that it was released with. I'm just gonna go ahead and update that. Give me a nice little warning that says, don't disconnect the device. Basically, if you disconnect the device while you're doing this, you run the risk of bricking it. I don't wanna brick my brand new ESC. So I would like to proceed. Yes, leave it connected. 
and now it has the status bar and that's going to let me know when it is complete so this should only take a few this should only take a few moments and you'll notice that there is a little blinking red light coming down here from the ESC itself and on the back of the programmer I'll be very careful so it doesn't unplug you'll see that it has a blinking status light so it's doing this thing so I don't want to potentially mess up a connection so I'm just gonna leave it there but you can see the reflection of the light coming off the ground here all right and we're back so it has completed and now you can see that the firmware has updated to current version 1.1.3 and that 1.0 version has just disappeared i can't go backwards sometimes they do that um, now with other escs sometimes you have an option to have multiple versions um, especially some of the older products uh, because honestly there are some guys who just they like the features or they like how certain older firmware versions run and they're creatures of habits and they don't want to adjust to the new advances or they don't think the advances are worth it. So I'll leave that up to you, what, uh, which version you go. But since it's a brand new product, I'm going with the latest firmware. All right, so let's go back to the main menu. So if you click here, basics. So I'm going to go through the process of setting this thing up out of the box just for all you guys who never done this before. So this will just be an educational process and I'll point out any new features as I see them and we'll just go from there. All right, so first off, always start with the basic tab. This is just gonna be your basic information. So if you are running a high power system like you probably would be connected to this ESC, you're going to be running a lithium polymer battery. So you wanna go ahead and set up your light bulb cutoff. So you see here, by default, it is set to auto lipo. Now you can change this to other things, uh, but this will automatically detect the voltage that you're running and give an automatic threshold. If you're ever confused with what any of these items do, just click on the little box and it brings up some information that tells you exactly what all the functions do. In order to protect your battery, uh, lithium polymer batteries don't like going below three volts per cell. Some people are a lot more paranoid and protective about the batteries than that. A lot of guys don't like to see their battery get below like 3.4 volts. I generally do about 3.2 volts. Um, and that's because lithium batteries, they have a discharge curve where they come down and they level off and then they just fall off quickly. So when you're below about 3.4 volts, there's actually very little energy left in the cell. So you could very quickly over discharge your battery and get it into a damage range. And if you get below three volts per cell, you run the risk of doing permanent damage to your batteries. So here you have the options of setting no cutoff. And as you see, it says do not use if you're running a lithium polymer battery pack. So basically it has these nice little defaults if you're running a two, three, or four cell pack. Here you have the other option of auto cutoff. And in this case, uh, for different type of applications, you can let the controller detect the number of cells and then automatically choose which cutoff curve it wants to use. So in this case, if I have auto cutoff, I can then tell it how many volts per cell I want it to use. So I can go all the way down to three volts per cell or up to 3.5 volt per cell. That's just your personal preference about how much you want to push your cells. I usually stick with 3.2, that's fine for me. If you wanna be more conservative and baby your cells, you can go a little bit higher. And honestly doing that would probably give you a little bit extra life for your cells, but I would never go below three volts per cell, which is why that's not even an option. Second thing I would change is your reverse type. I mostly do bashing uh, or speed runs. Either case, I will use reverse. Some guys don't. So if you're racing, uh, I think in many classes, you have to have reverse disabled. Um, next thing, BC voltage. This is a very important feature, especially if you are racing. Most servos that you use to control your steering are very sensitive to the voltage that you give them. Um, for those who don't know, BEC stands for Battery Elimination Circuit. That's essentially a circuit that is built inside of the ESC that acts as a, an external power source. Back in the old days, 
when cars were powered by gas or they had very weak batteries, you'd often have a separate battery that will power the servo and the receiver that was different than the drive battery. Or if you were using a, a nitro car or a gas car, you wouldn't have a main battery anyway. So this battery elimination circuit allows you to power your lower power electronics and that's lights, receivers, servos, any kind of accessories. If you're a crawler, you might have a winch, you know, all those things off of a different voltage than your main pack voltage. So for a lot of devices, you might be limited to only using around five volts. For racers or people who are using high powered servos, you might actually want to boost this up a little bit to go even higher and that will allow you to get more speed and more power out of your servos. Me, I'm going to set this to 6 volt. I'm using stock servos in most of my cars and don't judge me, but for general bashing types of applications or for things that you don't need lightning fast steering response, a stock servo will generally give you pretty good performance until it burns out and then you can replace it with a better servo at that other point. But I've actually had pretty good luck with stock servos just surviving. So by going up to six volts, I'll give myself a little bit extra power and a little bit extra speed. I could push that. Some servos can handle up to 7.5 or even eight volts. That could give you a significantly improved performance, but some electronics don't like that. For example, some receivers will quite frankly die if you give them more than a, more than six volts or six and a half volts. So double check all the components in your system and make sure that they're not sensitive before you change this. You could easily fry stuff. I know that everything in my system is safe at six volts, so that's what I'm gonna set it for. And this is just something that you uh, might or might not wanna change. You have your idle beeps. If your car is sitting and you're not doing anything, it will yell at you. Some people think that's a nice reminder. Some people hate it. If you hate your car beeping at you, just turn these off. I like the feedback. All right, next up, we got power. So this is an important thing that a lot of people get wrong. So out of the box, you see that your power setting is set below. That means that when you pull the throttle really hard, it's not just gonna slam down. That's a good way to protect your power system and why it's set to low. If you know that your components are nice and sturdy, you might want to increase this. I'm going to go to medium and that's going to give me a lot of power off the line, but reduce the shock on my drive line. So that's just something that I uh, be careful with. And again, just going through, you can see that low is best for most applications and it's nice and it's gentle on the battery. Medium will use this with higher quality batteries. Um, and it will give a lot of power, but it's not gonna run the risk of overloading things. With high, you need to make sure that you got good batteries because it can pull a lot of current and that if you have weak batteries that could cause damage to the cells. So, or you could overload your drive line and break stuff. So generally use your own discretion, but I'm going with medium. Okay, max power, I'm saying it's 100%, so it's up to me to be responsible and not overload my system. And you can go to custom values, anywhere from 30% to 100%. Why you would turn this down, sometimes you have a power system that's quite frankly too much for a particular vehicle, or it could be too much for the conditions. Like if I'm a racer, and I know that I have a low traction course, and I don't wanna be spinning out all over the place, I might wanna change this, so I don't just end up spinning out my whole track and you can also all right you can set your reverse percentage so that's how much power you get when you switch it into reverse 50% is a good nice value most people don't need to go as fast backwards as you go forward and then punch control this is again is related to startup power but as it says from here the setting limits how much power comes in how quickly so zero doesn't do any power ramping that just gives you um you know power as quickly as possible um 
but if you do find yourself in problems where you're overworking your system, you're overheating or things like that, you might want to go ahead and move this down a little bit. You can use punch control in conjunction with startup power to, they, they kind of do the same thing, but not really. So the start power basically gives you the amount of power that the ESC can use to get the car moving from a dead stop. The punch control that pretty much is the power that's on from your uh like after you started moving and you uh, that's your initial acceleration so it's a little different but you can use them in conjunction with each other to try to tune the character of your car as you get started all right so i'm leaving punch disable setting star power to medium oh and one thing i forgot to point out back here in the power menu you have torque control. I, I did a whole video talking about this, but you have the ability to perform a motor test and that essentially pairs your ESC to your motor. It lets the ESC characterize your motor so it knows exactly what motor is on there so it can do even more advanced control of your torque and your power. And the way you enable that is performing this motor test here. I'll link a video here that you can click on to see the whole process performing a motor test this is the same process but once you do that you can then go in and dial in the torque that you want from your motor so it gives you even more control so if you are the type of person who's trying to get every drop of performance out of your car you might want to go ahead and do this all right and now let's go to brake so now we come up to the brake setting here 50 percent brake i'll just leave it at that and you tune this for your cars uh Sometimes you might need a little bit more brake. Sometimes you might need a little less. This is just something that you just work out uh, as you get used to it. Brake lockout time. So depending on how you drive your car, you may go to neutral before you apply the brake. I don't. I typically, for a lot of type of things, uh, wanna go immediately to brake so I can stop the car immediately and change directions and, and you know. So depending upon how you run, you may or may not do that. So this just allows you to be able to change how quickly your brakes get applied. Uh, so help your car feel the way that you want to. This is again, one of those personal preference types of driving feel things. So this one is reverse to forward brake amount. Okay. This is the same as brake amount, but apply it when transitioning from reverse throttle to forward throttle. So again, helping you to set up the feel of the car for how you like to drive it drag brake this is particularly important for um, guys who are doing like rock crawling and that sort of thing where it determines how quickly your car effectively acts like a brake uh, it's almost like regen braking if you if you're used to driving an electric car so when you get off of the throttle and coast does your car just roll freely or does it immediately come to a stop so a lot of guys like to have drag brake disabled, especially when you're um, doing things where you don't want to suddenly lose speed. But some guys like the style of being able to change it. So when you get off the throttle, you just immediately slow down. So you see here, full crawler mode, that's 100% on or off. By default, it's disabled, but you can adjust that to get the feel that you want. Okay, and again, brake, drag brake ramp, this is how quickly that drag brake engages. So you can have disabled, which is bam, it's on as soon as you're off the throttle, or you can have it ramp up. So again, let you get your stop. So now we get into the meat and potatoes of what the Castle ESCs can do. You can set advanced functions. So the auxiliary wire, this can be a little controversial for some people. I use my auxiliary wires. I figure I paid for the capability of this ESC, I might as well get the full advantage out of it. So you have lots of different choices of what you can set the auxiliary wire to do. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, you see this ESC right here, it has this extra wire. So by default, you have the ESC on channel two for most setups. And there's a easy mnemonic people say, one to turn, two to burn. So set your ESC up for channel two, and then you have this other wire here, which is channel three. You see there's only one wire that comes out. That's because there's no power being delivered to the receiver over this. It's all going through the channel two wire. 
But Castle ESCs, since the Mamba Monster Generation, have had the ability to set up a third channel to control extra functions inside the ESC. And you can do that to, uh, as you see on the screen here, you can set it to do nothing, and a lot of guys set it to do nothing. Uh, but you can also have it change the max power of the ESC. So this might be a feature you wanna use if you are gonna give your car to kids, or if you just wanna be able to just dial in uh, on a knob on your radio, like you can with my uh, Radio Master MT-12, you know, what the maximum power output of the ESC wants to be. You can set it to reverse percentage. So again, similar, if I wanna adjust my reverse speed versus my forward speed, I can uh, set it up so I can have a max drag brake adjust. I can have drag brake adjustment. Sorry, I can set up to have the maximum brake amount. So again, dialing in my brake, and that can be important if I'm a racer, um, you know, so I can have on a knob or on a, or on a push button control, being able to adjust that on the fly. That could be a really important feature. Um, whether I want reverse engage for disabled, um, torque control limits. So again, that's, there's a lot of flexibility here. Uh, on my speed run cars, I generally have it set up so that I have a drag brake enabled. So if I'm setting up on a run, uh, or you, I guess you could do this if you're drag racing too. Sometimes staging can be difficult because the cars want to roll, especially if the surface isn't completely flat. So you can set up drag brake so that you can have the ability to, to get into position a lot more controlled. So again, just lots of flexibility and I'll leave it up to you guys to figure out how you want to use this feature. For me, I'm going to, uh, for this car, since I'm setting up as a basher, I will set it up to control um, my maximum power. Um, actually, you know what? I'll set it up for drag brake. Because um, sometimes with the bashers, I like to uh, just go ahead and do a little crawling. It's not something that the cars are intended to do, but yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, and here, dead band adjust. For here, this basically lets you adjust how sensitive your throttle is. Some people want a little wider dead band so that you don't accidentally get on the gas or get on the brakes. So again, tuning how your car feels. This is where you get to some more interesting features. If you're one of the types of people who are trying to get the absolute most potential out of your car, you might spend a lot of time in this menu. But generally the out of the box configuration is pretty good. You have your current limiting, which is set to disable. So if you have a high power car, that's, you probably want to get all that power, but you can adjust that to the total number of amps. You see that this ESC is showing that it has a current limiting up to 500 amps. That's significantly more than what you could realistically put through a Mama Monster X, the previous ESC. So it's gonna be interesting to see how much current I can actually pull out of this. I'm sure some of the guys who were in the beta, they've already maxed theirs out, um, but I will check, I will see that for myself. Um, but you can see, you can go the limit all the way up to 500 amps, or you can run with no limit. This you would set to protect your batteries and your power system. If you are using small battery connectors, like if, you're, if your car is set up on like an XT60 or an XT90 connector, you're gonna wanna set this to like 100 to 150 amps max uh these castle connectors right here these are rated i believe for 250 amps um but if you're running eight millimeter bullets you can go much higher than that um but again that's for sustained power draw if you're just doing short pulls uh you could get 100 amps out of a dean's connector you don't want to do that very often but well using this feature you can limit power output just to make sure that you don't overwork your system okay um motor direction this would be pretty self-explanatory. Depending upon the gearing of your car, you might set everything up and then realize that the motor's spinning the wrong way. If that's the case, you plug it in, you change the direction, you go on with your day. You never, ever want to adjust your motor direction by just reversing the channel in your radio. 
that's a bad idea. And the reason is that ESC needs to know what direction forward is in order to properly apply power. If you just reverse the servo channel, so you have 100% power going to your reverse channel and 50% power going forward, that's a bad idea. So if your motor's spinning in the wrong direction, you got two options. If you're running sensorless, you can just flip two connectors here, or you can go into the setup and, um, and change the motor direction here. If you're running censored, you want to you want to make sure that you have the A, B, and C phases plugged up properly to your motor and adjust the motor direction here inside the ESC. Okay, next up, motor type. So here at motor type, you got three options. You have smart, slint, this is just a regular brushless motor. You have a sensored motor, so that uh, lets you get the, the much finer throttle control, and I talk about that in a whole other video, and I'll link to that here. Or you can actually set these up to run a brushed. If you're running a brushed motor, then you're only gonna be using two of the outputs on the ESC. And uh, there should be a description in the main that tells you how to do that. With these speed controllers, you can run brushed or brushless motors. Um, honestly, if you're running a brushed motor in a power class of this size, you probably should be running brushless anyway, because brushless is a lot more efficient if you're running brushed you're going to be wasting a lot of energy along the way and energy equals speed speed is you know if you're racing that's the name of the game you're, you're going to be losing out so i would let you have that option and here you have the option of sometimes your sensor wire might actually come disconnected from your esc when you're running if that happens to you you can uh, have it enable a sensor loss warning um I will enable that because uh, I do plan to be running sensor. Okay. And here is you get into motor timing. Now I'm going to leave it to normal because the this is going to go into a basher. If I was running in drag racing or speed running with this, this is where I could really get into um, dialing in the performance of my radio. Generally, the more timing you give the power, Generally, by giving a little bit more timing, you can pull a little bit more power out of the system, but it comes at the cost of efficiency. So you can't get to a point of diminishing returns where you're wasting more energy than you're actually getting out of the system. So this is where the art comes in to tuning. Um, so different guys have different philosophies. So here you've got cheat mode. So if you're running that, you can actually really dial up the performance of the motor, but it comes at the cost of efficiency, like I was saying. So this is one of those pro tip things. If you know what you're doing, you can go in, you can go ham, and you can actually really get a lot of extra performance out of your car. But if you don't know what you're doing, you might want to just talk to some folks, experiment a little bit, proceed with caution right here. So as they say, they Castle actually does not recommend cheat mode. We're using a four pole sensor motor okay so this is this is one of the ways that you could fry your motor so proceed with caution if you plan to go here I'm going to turn that off all right next up this is where I get a lot of my fun out of the ESC here you have your data logging now, one of the cool features about this ESC is that they have greatly increased the memory inside this guy. I mentioned in the intro, this is a 32-bit processor now, which basically means it's a much more powerful computer. But what it also does is th having 32 bits available means you can access more memory. That allowed Castle to put a much more capable data logging capability inside this device. Not only can they record more channels, they can actually record at twice the sampling rate than of the older ESCs and for a much longer time. So I've been told that the data logs can get huge with the new ESC, which is just fine by me. All right, so here you can select the values that you wanna actually record. So just going down the list, you got battery voltage, battery ripple, battery current, 
controller temperature, controller input throttle, controller motor power output, motor RPM, auxiliary wire mode, VC mode, and motor temperature. And these are all the, uh, so all these were already there, but now you have two new items, acceleration. The ESC actually has accelerometers in the X and Y dimension. That means forward, backwards, and side to side. It does not have a Z axis accelerometer. That means up and down. So it can't tell you how hard you're slamming in out of jumps. But for a lot of guys, you really wanna see how hard was your launch or how tight was that corner that you're doing. So here with the data logs, you can actually judge that. So that's useful for a bunch of applications. If you're speed running or drag racing, that'll tell you how hard your launches are. But if you are circuit racing, you can now see like what your cornering Gs are. That's pretty sweet. And that will let you, that'll give you real data to help you dial in the performance of your run. It doesn't take a whole lot of time, especially if you run the same tracks over and over and over again, for you to look at your data log and say, okay, there's turn one, there's turn two, there's turn three. And you could use this to see how hard you're hitting each these turns so you can see where you're losing speed. If you do lap one and you're able to get let's say 0.6 G's off of a turn, but then on lap two and lap three, you're going slower or your, your, your G forces are a lot lower. That's telling you that you're losing traction somehow. Or you can see, you can spot inconsistencies. So there's a lot of potential in how you can use that data. So this is pretty exciting. All right, so here you have controller orientation. So you tell it which direction is forward. So power wires to the front, back, left, or right. That will help to orient the data logs for the accelerometer. And down here we have the, this is kind of cool. You can choose which sessions you want to download. So I'll go ahead and I'll just download the log sessions just for the heck of it. So then this is the data that was in the ESC from the factory. And I see I've got my battery, ripple, all the good things in here and acceleration. So this is probably data that was left over from when the ESC was doing its initial testing. So I can see that they only tested a few amps. They tested it under a, a 25 volts maximum. So this was tested with 6S, uh, looking at the temperatures and it ran up to 30,000 or 40,000 RPM. And I have two sessions here. All right, so this one looks like it was a power test. So I got 171 amps that were logged through it. Again, it was standing still. So this was probably just on the test bench, just verifying its output. So I can see what was done with the wraps. So yeah, I can, so up here in the corner, I can select which session I wanna download and I can see, I can make notes to just help me keep track of things that I wanna keep track of and then save that all. So I'll just go ahead and save and I will save data and Tara is saved. All right, so let me go ahead and get back to the sessions. Okay, so lastly, see down here. So lastly down here, I can see my sampling frequency so here I can, in the past, I used to only be able to go up to 10 samples per second. Now I can go up to 20 samples a second. Why is that important? When you're doing certain types of operations like speed running or drag racing, you're on that throttle fast. I mean, like a, a drag race is only a couple seconds long. So if you are sampling at 10 samples a second, something that's only two seconds long, you're only gonna get 20 data points. That's not enough to really tune or to really understand exactly what your speed controller is doing so that you can tune it better. So here, by going up to 20 Hertz, you can get a lot more fidelity in how your EC is laying out on power so that you can tune it better. So things to keep in mind, but right now this is gonna go into a couple bashers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at the stock five samples per second. But once I start doing more aggressive things with this, I'll definitely crank that up. Okay, next up, 
you have your throttle curve. I'm just gonna leave it linear because I like to adjust my throttle curve on my radio. However, different guys do different things. So here, as you can see, if I did this, I have a lot of fine control. So I want a, a really funky, crazy throttle curve. I could do that. Um, if I don't want to do that, I can just put it back to linear. Um, or I could put in a curve like this. So, so this is basically adjusting the expo of your radio. And this gives you a lot of freedom, a lot of flexibility to tune it just how you want it. I don't know why you would ever want to do a throttle curve like this, but maybe you would. I'm just gonna keep mine linear though. Let's go none and then go back to linear and that recess it. Castle would be real nice to have a reset button though. Just saying. All right, and then here, same thing for brake curve and for reverse curve. So, all right guys, this ended up being a little bit longer than I anticipated, but I thought it was pretty important to go through the whole process of showing you how to set this thing up, walking through the software, uh, showing you all the options. Now again, most of the options are pretty common between the older ESCs, but there's some new stuff that's in there that is important for you guys to see and to understand how to deal with. So, but just overall from the quality and fit and finish of this thing, I think Castle did not get out of the park. Uh, again, I haven't run it yet, but just based upon my experience with the Mamba Monster X8S, God, that's a mouthful, MMX8S, that's what I'm saying. Um, but just, they've taken the build quality, they've taken all the advanced advancements that they put into it, um, and they've just taken it up a notch again. Uh, the I love these new aluminum cases. Uh, it feels really good in your hand. Um, this should be really good at dissipating heat. Um, I'm really excited about the fact that this uh, has current limiting up to 500 amps, which implies that it's got maybe double the current capacity of the, of the ESC is replacing. That's pretty exciting. Um, also, the 32-bit processor that's inside of this is going to enable Castle to put in future features that it couldn't even dream of with the older 8-bit processors. So some of that's going to be driven by you guys. How do you guys use your speed controllers? What features could they add in that will help you to get an even more of an edge? So I'm sure the engineers have a lot of ideas they're thinking around. Um, again, I haven't run it yet, so I don't know how this thing feels, but just with the creature comforts that I've seen so far and with what I've seen in the software, I'm pretty sure this thing's gonna knock it out of the park. All right, so next video, you're gonna see this actually in a couple of cars, me thrashing it, putting it through its paces and seeing what this thing can really do. Um, I hope this walkthrough video was useful to you guys. Some guys are really intimidated by the software side of things. In order to give you the most capability Sometimes it gets a little bit complicated, but it's not that bad. And I, if you don't know how to read Castle data logs, I've got videos to show you that. Uh, this one is kind of a redo of one I did in the past, uh, just giving you some of the new features. Um, don't be intimidated. After a little while, you get pretty comfortable with it and you can really, really use these capabilities to dial in your ESCs and get the most out of your vehicles. All right, guys, this is long enough. Stay tuned. We're going to be running this guy. We're going to be putting it through his paces. And also watch out for the other guys on Team Castle. You're going to see guys doing really nutty things with this ESC. Unfortunately, I was a little late to the party, but that's all right. I'm in the door now. You're going to see me do some cool stuff with it. All right, guys. All our house 21 sign out. Remember the mantra fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, do it all over again. Stay tuned. Run videos coming soon. Comparisons with the other ESCs. This guy is a new creature. It's something completely different, completely new. And if his performance is anything like his build quality and how and what they put into the software, I think they're going to have another hit on their hands. All right, guys, our house 21 signing out. Remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. And don't forget to check me out on social media and all those other places you can find me. You guys know where to get it by now. 
Um, there's going to be a lot more regular content coming out here soon. Stay tuned. We're going to have some fun. Our house turning one side and out. Peace.